The training camp hype train has officially left the station. Yes, as our Chiefs are now a week through camp, which is kind of crazy to say, the hype train is at full speed, building up a number of our players for our favorite red and gold. You know, the, the local Chiefs media, the Twitter verse, uh, all over, you know, the, the internet, all sorts of articles are being written and things are being messaged and said about different players at training camp, getting that hype train going, and here are a few of the players that are getting all hyped up. Second round wide receiver, rookie Sky Moore, who I'm really excited about, has has looked reportedly very smooth, tough, and electric. Defensive end Frank Clark is reportedly in better shape and looking quicker on the edge. Safety Juan Thornhill has reportedly been making plays all over the defensive backfield. Juju Smith-Schuster, the wide receiver, is reportedly the most polished receiver on the team so far. Wide receivers Justin Watson and Darius Fountain who are in that mix of who's going to make the roster at the low end of the wide receiver depth chart well, they're seemingly already locking down the fifth and sixth receiver spots. Running back Isaiah Pacheco, the seventh rounder, has reportedly played so well that he's gotten snaps with the first team offense and will get the first look to start at kick returner. Linebacker Isaiah Lee is reportedly climbing his way into a backup role on the defense while shining on special teams. Linebacker Leo Chanel has been playing physically hitting guys out there in training camp. So there's, there is plenty of hype, right? Plenty of training camp hype on the hype train. But let me pump the brakes a little bit on this hype train. Because honestly, this happens every single year. Sure, sometimes a lesser known guy steps up in camp, ends up really breaking out. But a lot of times, the training camp hype train is just that. Is a bunch of, is a bunch of hype. <laughs> I mean, look back at the guys who have gotten really hyped up in past years during camp in the media. In 2019, you, you can still find tweets about how defensive back Demontre Wade was a standout in camp. Oh yeah, you really re remember Wade, right? <laughs> You can find articles still from 2019 about how Tano Kapasinyan looked uh, very explosive or that Breland speaks. You can still find this. People who were claiming that in that training camp, Breland Speaks was developing nicely or that Carlos Hyde was getting first team reps. You can still find articles about how receiver Gehrig Dieter was just amazing at camp in 2017. In one 2018 tweet from Chiefs camp, we were told to remember the name Jordan Smallwood. <laughs> You remember, right? Last year in 2021, safety Devon Key was widely heralded as having an amazing camp. He had a really rough preseason, ended up on the practice squad instead. So my point is this. The hype train? Well, it's fun. Sure. The training camp hype train is so fun because we're so desperate for football. And occasionally it can be right. But a lot of times... The hype train is just a bunch of noise. <laughs> so, you know, have fun with it, but don't pay too much attention. Don't take that hype train too seriously. And hey, real quick, before we get into the news, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for all your best weekly Chiefs updates. So first off in big Chiefs news, left tackle big Orlando Brown has officially reported to training camp, which is great news. In talking to the media, Brown indicated that he did not sign the big deal in Kansas City that we offered him because of a lack in guaranteed money. But there's there's no hard feelings, he said, on his side, and he hopes to finish his career with the Chiefs. Now, I think it's a pleasant surprise to see him show up. We need our starting left tackle in camp. And I, I, it's a pleasant surprise because the guy delayed even finding an agent until way into the offseason. He rejected a contract that was more than fair considering his play. So... Yeah, he's been a complete bonehead this offseason, and so I thought maybe this guy's going to keep being a bonehead, not show up to camp. But he did the right thing showing up to camp, and I think that is a nice, nice, pleasant surprise for our Chiefs. And of course, like we always hear from guys going into a contract year, Brown claims to be in the best shape of his career. How many times have you heard this over and over again? I'm in the best shape of my life, right? Which, yeah. 
for him it wouldn't be hard. In great news, the Kansas City Chiefs have signed Carlos Dunlop, the defensive end, most recently of Seattle, but in his career, he's best known for playing for the Bengals. This is actually the exact player I just suggested that we signed last week. He was basically uh, the, the, the last, maybe the last starting quality, you know, guy available on the defensive line in free agency, and we desperately needed still to upgrade this defensive line. It's been announced it's a one-year deal worth up to $8 million, but the key phrase is worth up to, so I'm sure that like half of that is just incentives. Now, I really like this signing. I really do, because we needed desperately needed a starting defensive end, a guy who could push Frank Clark. And I'm hoping I'm going to get some time to make a video on just this signing sometime soon. In other news, corner Chris Lehmans for the Chiefs recently had his court case delayed. Uh, basically, the guy, if you haven't heard, just playing like a tacted dude with some other NFL players back in February and left him unconscious. <laughs> now, I love my Chiefs. But come on, we have to have a little more wisdom here. Why have a backup guy like this on the roster with these sorts of off-the-field issues? Or, or maybe the NFL just doesn't care about off-field indiscretions anymore, and for proof, we could see the Deshaun Watson case. In injury news, Mahomes' foot was stepped on by an offensive lineman who shall not be named, but he will be fine. Sky Moore's hip got hurt, but he will be fine. Tight end Jody Fortson has been out with a quad. Hopefully that doesn't last too long. And then you got corner Rashad Fitton, tackle Lucas Niang, offensive lineman Prince Tega Wanogo. Uh, they've all been absent, absent on the PUP list. In other news, the Chiefs will start their preseason against the Bears in less than a week and a half which seems crazy to me that football is getting so close. If you consider the preseason football. In other news, wide receiver Josh Gordon has apparently been really struggling in camp. We talked about all the guys on the hype train. He's like under the hype train. <laughs> you know, after his drop-tastic season last year, I was kind of surprised to see the Chiefs re-sign him. And it doesn't look like anything's really changed during camp. So do not be surprised if he does not make the final cut, particularly because he doesn't really help on special teams. In other news, defensive end Frank Clark had a remarkably transparent conversation with the media recently. I thought it was really interesting. He said that after the season, Andy Reid pulled Frank aside and told him in so many words that he did not play as well as he could have last season, which, yeah, a uh, complete understatement, right? <laughs> Clark said that in response to get more serious, that he gave up liquor. And that since then, some of his stomach issues have gone away and his body's feeling way better, which I'm really happy for Frank for giving that up. Really, that's huge. That's a big, hard step for anybody. But it also kind of begs the question that nobody wants to say out loud. If he was drinking liquor to such a degree that it was affecting him that bad, like how much liquor was that? I can kind of only imagine. But I'm, I'm glad he's cutting it out. And all reports are he really is in better shape. So as much grief as I give Frank Clark on this channel for not playing up to his contract and all that, I am very proud of him for making this decision in his life. In other news, when Orlando Brown delayed his camp start, it gave some time for backup Roderick Johnson to experiment as the left tackle, which may mean that Johnson could enter the season as the Chiefs backup left tackle or maybe backup swing tackle. Now, who is Roderick Johnson? Well, Johnson was drafted by the Browns in the fifth round all the way back in 2017. He was waived by the Browns a year later without playing single snap for them due to injury. He headed to Houston, where he went back and forth fourth between the roster and the practice squad in 2018. Then he started actually three games for the Texans in 2019, playing okay-ish. <laughs> he spent 2021 on the Dolphins practice squad. Then he was signed by the Chiefs earlier this year. And who knows? Who knows? He could be a key backup for us this season. In other news, Former Chiefs first round draft pick, D Ford. Remember D Ford? He was recently cut by the 49ers. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see how long it takes for some team to come along and take a flyer on him, given his 
very serious injury track record. So, okay, whoosh, that's a lot of news, but what do you think? What do you think about Orlando Brown reporting to camp? Uh, who do you think has been looking good in camp so far? Do you think we should uh, take this training camp train hype seriously leave me all your thoughts in the comments below thanks for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and go chase